Hello. This is recorded on the fly and without preparation or structure. I just wanted to get it out finally. This is a short and quick manual for meditation, the simplest form that to my knowledge exists without any fancy shenanigans around it and it to my knowledge is surprisingly unknown in the western world and instead we get um, in my experience pretentious and nonsensical westernized unnecessarily westernized versions like mindfulness meditations pushed by uh, people like Sam Harris who doesn't seem to know what meditation is really about but that aside um, if you want to get to the quick manual there should be a timestamp in the description other than that I just want to elaborate a little more on why I, f I think this stuff pushed by people like Sam Harris is utter nonsense and distracts from the actual issue, the actual thing. Because true meditation is not about a goal. Mindfulness meditation is about a goal. It is about attaining mindfulness, as it is said. And it is more just like a form of guided meditation, which, well, is more like a toy for children. Although children can actually meditate properly if, if, they, if they wanted to, or if you wanted to do it with them together. The joke is that with simple bare bones, meditation that for example you find in Zoto Zen mindfulness is a byproduct that you get automatically so there is no point in meditating specifically to attain what they call mindfulness mindfulness meditation also distracts from what or any meditation that does have a specific goal in mind um, effectively withholds the effects that plain meditation has. Um, following the Buddhist principle of the path is the goal, meaning that don't bother with the goal. Just focus on the path. If you stay on the path, you will eventually reach the goal by all by itself before you know it. It seems far away, maybe beyond the horizon of your comprehension. But you will get there, eventually. But you require patience. The opposite um, mode of thought and conduct to that would be, when you focus on the goal, is the, the doctrine of by any means necessary. That would be the other extreme. That is when the path doesn't matter as long as you get the goal, which is a very juvenile, childish, narcissistic way of going about the world, and it usually causes strife. And the actual goal that is intended is not reached, in part because well, the path wasn't taken, and thus the goal is tainted or you get something that you think is the goal but isn't. <sighs> Sorry. I tend to have a bit of gas in, in my stomach. So, by focusing on the path, the goal it can be attained. However, you need to stop caring about the goal in order to focus, be able to focus on the path. That same principle is true in meditation. The counterintuitive truth about it is that the less you want something from meditation, the more you get out of it. 
and that is uh, maybe a for many people a strange way to come about so it's something you best experience as such for um, that you gain mindfulness on the fly is one of the benefits another is that through this introspection so you have automatic you, you have you do not just process um, old thoughts that are just stuck in your memory somewhere like uh, imagine dust on the porch that is finally brushed off or if you want to be a bit more vulgar a uh, well detoxification of your intestines with all the gunk that's been stuck in there for the past seven years Although that doesn't happen instantly, of course. But it basically cleans out the RAM in your mind that you kind of never do, never get to, that your REM sleep, your dream sleep, is supposed to do, but doesn't get all of it. Meditation kind of gets the rest of it, and you can maybe, maybe compare it to brushing your teeth but in a mental way it is it is a form of psychological hygiene whether you have any esoteric goals in mind and as i said that's already a mistake to have a goal with meditation but there are certain effects that we know about we know about the uh, brainwave changes that happen during it but those are all details that you can research on your own if you are so inclined the relevant part is that in this cleanup you are alone with yourself and thus reflect upon yourself inevitably which is what leads to consciousness growth and not in the sense of what you hear from from um, people who take certain drugs but the actual growth of um, order of consciousness as it is named in some psychological uh, schools of thought or um, more simply put in if you struggle to get out of your childish juvenile shenanigans and haven't really become an adult yet this is what can get you over that edge into the next level of of mental maturity, of emotional maturity, which is something that is quite lacking in society at this point. And then even beyond that, which are states of consciousness comprehension that most people don't ever achieve naturally. Meditation is a way to help get you a bit more closer to that. Because it actually makes you think all by itself. Which is also why narcissists, actual narcissists, shy away from meditation like the pest. Because the last thing they want is confront their true selves, their reflections, their true reflections in which they notice all of their flaws. Because the narcissist can't stand the reality of being flawed. There's some interesting research into that as well. However, um, I hope this is enough prelude and uh, I will try to get into the actual manual, short manual of this pure meditation that you find in Soto Zen. And Soto Zen too has, has certain little things that, let's, let's say, basically help with focus and concentration. However, um, they're not necessary to just start. A, these are things that you can just add over time if you feel so inclined. Um, 
it is recommended over time, but the most important thing is that you start and that you make a habit of it. And whether that is just once a week with 20 minutes, and at first you may only be able to do 5, then 10, then 20, like doing, um, what was it called, not crunches, it also works for crunches, uh, squats. The first time you ever do squats, you will you will have you will be in pain after fi after just five repetitions. And before you know it, if you just do it every two days, you will be bored doing fifty. That's a good sign. Meditation is similar. And a um, average session for the average person is about twenty minutes, and you will naturally come out of it again. So, how do we actually do this? The Soto Zen method is best summarized by Savagi Kodo or his uh, student Taizen Deshimaru Roshi as, and you will laugh about this, just sit. That's it, and I could end the video here. But I will give you a bit more of an explanation. Just sit is the core of meditation. As I said before, for starters, it doesn't really matter how you sit, whether you are able to do a lotus seat, half a lotus seat, just sit cross-legged, or simply sit in your chair in a comfortable position. If you can sit upright, that is of course helpful, but many people these days have weak backs, so don't bother too much with it from the get-go. Some people have a natural urge after a few attempts of meditation to just naturally move into an upright position. Because it also in, uh, helps with breathing as you pull the, so the, the shoulders back naturally. So the important thing is just sit. Whether you do it with half open eyes and focus on a point in front of you on the floor or do it with closed eyes as I do is a thing of personal preference. A, if you don't know what to do with your hands, the basic recommended position is to just fold your hands, not with the fingers interlocked, just put your hands together in, fr in your lap and lightly, without pressure, have your thumbs tip, have, your, have the tips of your thumbs uh, touch each other. Be relaxed. And that is your first most simple stance of meditation, true, simple, pure meditation. Just sit. And there is a joke that the, the little man's meditation is, happens once a day in the morning on the toilet. Because it's a one time that you sit down and just sit. Do nothing. And get all the shit out of your system. Get, bit, get back into a more serious way. And if you like these kinds of jokes, I do recommend the books of Savaki Kodo and to a degree Taizen Deshimaru Roshi, which sadly, as far as I know, only appear, uh, appeared in the original Japanese as well as in German, as those were, as um, Taizen Deshimaru Roshi brought it into the Germanic lands. And yeah, sadly didn't make it into the English language, which is probably why um, in the Anglosphere nonsense like mindfulness meditation had such an easy way to get in. Because that's the explanation for that is more complicated than just sit. So, that's the physical part. 
just sit. Now what is the mental part of just sit? The first phase that you may encounter in meditation is something that puts a few people off, understandably, because there will be a lot going on in your head which we could, score, we could call a mind storm. And not in the sense of you sitting in, uh, in a boardroom and mind storming ideas with your colleagues, but just so many thoughts that you cannot even make anything out of it. It is just an overwhelming swirling fog that depending on how much baggage you have in your head on that mental porch can take a few sessions to uh, I'm sorry I'm struggling with uh, English words I am quite tired as I'm doing this um, it can take quite a while to, to haul this nonsense out. But this part is already your mind, your subconscious, sorting through all of that old baggage. It's basically defragmenting your mind. Like something that Windows to this day does naturally if I am, uh, or automatically rather, as, I, uh, as, as far as I know. And Linux does, which make which is what one of the many things that makes Windows slower over time. But that is an off topic. That is very off topic. I I just love these stupid comp uh, comparisons. <sighs> now, for some people they're lucky, and the mindstorm is gone in the first se after the first session. What happens afterwards is where we get into the actual meditation. That is a state where your mind seems more clear and individual thoughts emerge from the depths of your mind. Now, those thoughts can be positive or negative. Things that you want to cling to or that you resent or despise or fear. Now, the important thing is, and this is a bit counterintuitive at first and requires a bit of effort on your part, but it will become natural. What you do with these emerging faults is that you neither cling to them nor push them away. So, you do not hold on to the positive faults that emerge and you do not try to push away the bad faults that emerge. You simply wait them out and they will pass on their own. You let them pass. You do not interact with them. In that, in doing that, or rather this not doing, this active not doing, if you will, your mind finally processes these things. For as long as you do interact with them, it will keep them. And it doesn't mean that you forget these things, it just means that they will be processed into your long-term memory, the emotional baggage detached, and they will not further plague you in any way and you will be able to interact with them in a more neutral, rational, stoic way. That doesn't mean you will lose the fondness for positive thoughts, so don't worry about that. However, this only happens if you don't have the goal in mind to clean your mind. You need to be empty and you cannot force yourself to be empty. You cannot focus on nothing. This is another 
mistake that is often taught about meditation in the West, that you need to focus on something, to concentrate on something. The truth is, you don't. The point is the absence of focus, the absence of thought. You are detached, but not from yourself. You simply refuse to keep the attachment to those thoughts. That means no resentment to those thoughts, just let them pass by. And imagine it like a card game. People who know Magic the Gathering probably understand this best, as well as people in IT, that all of these old thoughts are like a stack of cards. So the things that come up first are the youngest cards that got onto this, that stack. So before you get to that really old gunk, it may take a while. And if you've never meditated like this in your life, well, that might be a pretty big stack of cards. The good thing about doing this is that over time you will free up your mind of a lot of stuff that takes up resources that you simply don't need. Think of it like having open a thousand tabs in your browser, in your web browser, and one by one closing them. You still have your history, so you can, and, and your memory in general, so you can access them if you want to, you can reopen them, but for once they're gone and don't occupy the memory anymore. And that is that. Now, there is a third layer to meditation, and that is one that comes once that stack is empty. That is something that, again, you do not aim for, you do not look for, you do not hope for. It happens when it happens. And that is when another type of meditation begins. That is where the consciousness growth happens. And that you will know when it does. There are people who meditate to get high. That is a goal. Because you can't you can do that. You can meditate to get yourself high. Like people who pray themselves into a trance. Praying and meditating have some similarities, but they're very different in key. In, in key components not just because praying does have a point it is also a loaded mechanism but that is a topic for another time so as you can get from this explanation meditation is simply to just sit physically and mentally. A last thing I would mention to this is um, something that may be a bit uncomfortable that I think it is a necessary warning and that is for people with actual PTSD. Not the hysteric people who believe themselves to be that or falsely claim to have that, but people with actual PTSD. If you have severe PTSD, what meditation will do is to quite instantly, depending on the severity, cause you a, an instant episode with flashbacks and all the other symptoms you get during that. This is because the PTSD is unprocessed memories that is more like a shipping container on your porch and well your mind does want to process that away. It's a pretty big chunk. If it is merely mild PTSD Meditation may help you to process some of it. But that too requires some mental strength. For severe PTSD, however, well, 
If you're good, you can last for maybe half a minute or even two, but it will feel less like meditation does when you are healthy in that regard and instead feel like a constant internal battle where you are ripping at the seams in every imaginable direction. That is not helping you process and is very straining. So, with that warning out of the way, I hope this video can help some people, especially those I made it for. And if you have questions, please put them in the comment section or want to share your experiences with, the, with this guide. And I would close this with the words of Savaki Kodo. Just sit. Have a good day. Wait, the last words should have been just sit.